let's dive into relationships. We want to talk about gender wars in marriage and uh, specifically to ask, answer the question, who should be wearing the pants in the relationship? Of course, this is the time and the age that we live in where, you know, women are becoming more and more empowered. Many women are actually out earning their husbands and that's okay too. Um, but does it mean that now things in the house have to change as well? Benjamin Zulu, karibu sana to Asante. the show. Great to have you here our culture seems to be dismissing these differences between men and women uh, we often hear quotes like what a man can do a woman can do better <laughs> and I tell you Joyce that war the war between us men and women is fueled by ignorance and fear mm -hmm. ignorance of the roles we are supposed to play in life our purposes in life mm -hmm. and the fear of our own uniqueness yes we think competing will be fulfilling in, rea in reality, when you compete, we end up frustrated. When we become a unit, when we come together and we are man and woman, uh, I, I, let's start by saying, in majority of the cases, you find that it's the man who earns more, in majority of the cases. But with the evolution, nowadays we have a, a very funny evolution where women as a group are moving faster mm -hmm. <laughs> than men. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and men became comfortable in the leadership and they grew fat and lazy. <laughs> You know, we became entitled to this thing and we think we are always ahead and, you know, there's a man's world, an mm -hmm. NBCD. And quietly, women started table banking. They started grouping <laughs> in small ways. In During the Mau Mau, women were left and started table banking and chama and things. Because of grouping and the movement for women and girl child rescue, and they grouped more. So there's a more, we have a women's bank. You don't have men's bank. <laughs> We have women's groups, women's things, girls. It's true, women had been, they needed to be rescued. There was a lot of, but even after the rescue mission is over, they continued now to take up leadership. So mm -hmm. what is happening today is that we have that dynamic. But the first thing is to say that once we come together, Jesus uh, announced women not to come to the home with the political notions, mm. coming with activism, that now there's a new movement. And <laughs> men, women, are, even the man can cook and serve the woman. <laughs> There are some things about your psychology that will not change, even when civilizations change. Mm -hmm. We need to establish the following, that although the, the roles at home, sometimes if the woman is earning more and the man is at home taking, is more available, there's no problem. Mm -hmm. These kids are mine as well. Mm -hmm. I can take care of them, drop them to school, do these things. I don't mind, uh, you know, if you are, be we can agree that because we just wanted money to come to us, whoever brings it home, we are no longer going to say this is your money, this is my money. Mm. We are no longer going to divide and say who is earning more. We, mm. not, we are a unit against the world. It mm. is us against the world, not me against you. Mm -hmm. So we are simply going to divide the roles. What I like about uh, if you go to the West, you find that men don't find it emasculating at all when they perform the roles at home. Yeah. And if he arrives home early, if he's the woman, it just depends on who is busier that season, who is yeah. more available for what. Yeah. So the woman doesn't, the money, they even put it together, pay the bills, and they are functioning. The world do not come and shout, hey, you guy, can't you see you're supposed to be the one? No, 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 no. So when we come together, Jesus, let's look at what works for us. Mm -hmm. The only immunity we must bring is, I, I know a lady who works for FIDA, you know, <laughs> those who champion the rights for women. And she's among the top there. I know her because she's an auntie to my classmate in law school. And he used to tell me closer, you see that lady over there? She looks like an activist, but at home, she's a very balanced woman. Yeah. Now, law has a deficiency of balanced women. <laughs> <laughs> Generally, as a profession, there's that activism, <laughs> you know, and the desire to be abrasive. So... So you have to be careful when you're talking to her. Even if it's a date, you have to prove everything you said. Yeah. You say you love her. Uh, what, what exactly <laughs> do you love about me? <laughs> what did you say? Uh, did you say love or like? Or is it affection? Or is it uh, please substantiate? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can't go to a date with all that. So yeah. I told uh, my my colleague women that my colleague lawyers, I was telling them, if you forget your role as a woman, the simple thing is a lady. Just walk with the grace and simplicity and to flow. Romance requires a light touch. Law and academia are serious and deep and investigative. No, we can't go like that. So, Joyce, the first thing to tell young, young women who are coming up, don't mistake the notion of enlightenment, empowerment, and, and leadership, boss lady. Never call yourself boss lady in a date. There's nothing attractive <laughs> about boss lady. Nothing. Nothing. Oh, Let me Lord. whisper to you. You are demarketing yourself. You are shooting yeah. your own foot. Yeah. <laughs> Don't yeah. say I'm an empowered woman. Don't use that language. Don't say I'm boss lady. Don't say I'm independent. Oh, that's a taboo. <laughs> Don't use that language anywhere. <laughs> 
don't don't place the car key between us. <laughs> I love I love the guy, the guys is that one the car one thing you know and the ladies is, is you that know. Car. <laughs> And it's branded there with Charles is German. Please, and don't come with your assistant and you're dropping things in their <laughs> hand and say, hey, <laughs> please, don't do that. Don't display uh, power. Yeah. It's not, in love relationships, we are looking for simplicity. You know, because we don't want to be stoned in the public, we men agree with the public notion and political notion of, yeah, yeah, whatever we men, yeah, <laughs> in fact, because some of us are employed by the NGOs and we need our salary, hey. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I agree with the public, but in private, <laughs> When it comes to choosing a mate, yeah, I go down to basics. Can this woman simply flow? Well, let me go back. Let's let's actually talk about those basics because um, you've talked about there being roles in a marriage for the man and for the woman that many of which are actually they're rooted in religion and not just the Christian faith, but I You're think right. many other religions as well. They're rooted in culture, You're right. but you've also said they're rooted in psychology. Yes. I want us to explore that a little bit more because I think part of the tension today is if a woman, you know, is working really, really hard and the money is still coming to the same household, you know, does she have an equal say at the table considering even her, she's, you know, she's carrying her weight. Maybe she's out earning the guy. And I think that is part of the frustration today. Just, I'm happy you brought, so let us say the, the differences in our roles are created by our faith and our culture. Mm -hmm. uh, faith and culture are intertwined. We, we, we usually borrow one from the other. But let us not delve into that. You find cultures vary so much, but let me go to psychology because that's what's universal and that's where I study more. That's, mm -hmm. where I st that's what I deal with on a day to day. Now, our psychology and the way we are wired, uh, let's, let's, let's intertwine it, let's, let's now co co contrast it with money. We were born to, as a woman, we were born to be cherished. To be told, psychologically, I usually say the man is a projector, the woman is a screen. Mm. <laughs> so he sends energy and vibe, and she reflects perfectly <laughs> whatever she's receiving. A healthy woman, a healthy man. That's the arrangement you will see. Mm. And that's why I told you, even if you say you're a modern woman and you propose to a man, I'm with you on that one. I don't know about that, guys. You have reversed the order. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't work that way. Yeah. So I met with some girls saying, oh, nowadays, if you see a Charlie, don't just sit there. Go after him. Don't wait until another guy got after him. And Hello. Then you know, I saw them. <laughs> There's a plan. I sat looking <laughs> and I waited. And when she finished, I asked her, okay, so let's assume I'm the, boy I'm the boyfriend. You propose me and I say yes. Next. Who, you have assumed leadership. Oh, take over. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so who will ever pursue you? Who will bring you the flowers? Who will treat you? Who will take you? Your psychology as a woman is wired to be pursued, not you to pursue. And men are wired to pursue, not to be pursued. I told you, however courageous a lion is, if it sees an, a deer running towards it, the first instinct will be to run away. <laughs> it will not be to say the meat has, the meat has brought itself. Yeah. Because it's not wired like that. Yeah. So we are saying uh, the psychology number one is even if you're having more money, Joyce, at some t circumstances in life, and I pity a man if mm. he sits there and the woman overtakes him. I ask men, don't hold down the woman. Let her fly, but please fly ahead of her. <laughs> mm. Be ahead of her so that you still earn the right. And I told men, even if she's earning whatever, provide the basics at home to give you more or right to remain the leader. Leadership is not a name. So, but let me ask you this. So when it comes to the, a great example, I know a couple who the lady studied finance. The guy actually is in ministry. He's a pastor. Okay. okay? So when it comes to things like the stock market, you know, investment, property, she technically has an upper hand and she um, she actually knows a little more than mm -hmm. the guy. Of course. Yeah. So, you know, can she sort of contribute her opinions to that relationship? Yes, because there should. are people, who, there are men, though, who say, I am the man of this house. I am the one who's supposed to make the decisions. That's not what being a man means. That's being an, an egotistic or bully. We mean you are supposed to, ideas. You see, um, you need to be so secure enough that we want to, the best ideas and we open up to you tell me more. If I, if, as I told women, I told guys, if you get a woman who's an expert in a field that you need, you're blessed. Mm. Utilize that expertise. Don't be foolish enough to marry a powerful woman and switch off her power. What's that? Mm. You see, we are a unit, Joyce. We are not competitors. Right. We right. are a unit. So, and I want, hey, now that you've mentioned the ministers. Oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> 
I want to ask now. brothers, if you are called to ministry, organize your life in a manner that you keep progressing and moving. Don't stagnate saying, I'm waiting for the ministry to grow. Mm -hmm. as, P as Paul was preaching and actually writing in the Bible, he had a tent business. Yes, yes. <laughs> and he said, I'm working for two reasons. Yeah. So I, I help the needy and that I don't become a burden myself. Mm. So I am so happy when you bring that combination because some people are genuinely called to ministry. Mm. Genuinely, it's a sincere calling. Mm -hmm. But I have had a bishop who was, uh, I, who I really admired. He, he, had, he was, when, we had, when the church is giving, he would give more than anyone. Mm. When they were fundraiser, he would donate more. He was so respectable because he was so organized. He had lands, he was selling lands, buying plots, doing things. He had his own life going, and he was a full-time minister. Mm. So I'm so, I'm, I, I, I emphasize that just because the lady has a technical knowledge in finance does mm. not mean you sit there and say she will earn the money joyce i cannot earn you even if you're in finance mm -hmm. i will right. i'll break my back to remain on top of things i want to ask brothers not to sit back remain on top of things man yeah. there's something rewarding as a man when you go hunting and you bring but you know you feel you feel at home yeah. uh, eventually because many women are so driven because they are so committed to their children they know i have to take care of this child somehow i can sit back and <laughs> that maternal connection is what drives women to work by all means and yeah. they say i can't risk my child dying or suffering especially when the guy is not stepping up to the plate yes especially if she knows i can't i'm not so sure about this guy <laughs> so or nowadays a more frequent case single women yeah those who know i can't i'm the father and the mother <laughs> they're driven so hard they keep going so i want to ask brothers the first thing we can do as men is to be so connected to our children and their future and their welfare because responsibilities are the greatest uh, develop our people. When you know you have responsibilities to deliver, you can't sleep. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk about another element, which is, say the man is taking leadership. He's steering most of the decisions. He's the one scouting for opportunities. But perhaps, you know, most men tend to be more risk takers than women. You're right. Right? But maybe this guy is too much of a risk taker. And the woman is trying to have him exercise some caution. Mm -hmm. I love when I say, who, who, who wears the pants in this relationship? Am I not the head of this household? You know, how do you, because these are real issues that people go through. These are what, real tensions. As you say that, it reminds me that risk taking does not mean you, you push the family to instability and, and uh, you expose them to debt. I have seen men who keep making bad decisions financially and throw the family off, you know, until the family is in debt. That's not what we are saying. We are saying because women are more wired for stability and men are more wired for progress. That progress is what keeps them, uh, keep trying things and taking risks. It must be measured. And beyond it being measured as I go on break, should it be agreed on? You know, should, should, should men be consulting their wives about financial exactly. decisions? Especially decisions that are potential to hurt us if they go wrong. There are small things that you can do. They don't have uh, too much of, you know. But because we are talking, just remember we are communicating. You are co-pilot. I'm pilot. You are my co-pilot. We are communicating on what we are doing next. And I, we are talking constantly. And there's nothing I keep you from you secret. And then I tell you when I've already signed for something and taken decisions that are, you know, significant. That's not right. It yeah. must be agreed or there must be an, some, some, some agreement. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I want us to take a break. And when we come back, I want us to explore some questions that we have coming in. Um, and you can send yours in as well to triple one, triple four, triple one. Uh, you can also comment on Facebook at Switch TV Kenya. And we'll be back after this. All right, guys, welcome back to Full Circle with Joyce. I'm here with Benjamin Zulu, and we're going through relationship talk. And um, interesting conversation here because we're talking about gender wars in marriage and uh, whether roles have changed, whether they should change, or whether we should just be going back to the things that we knew or the way that our parents, you know, in our parents' generation was brought, was brought up and raised. And uh, I want, Benjamin, I think there's something to be said about how we are actually raised to become adults and how for many girls and young women, it is impressed upon us from a young age how to be mm. a wife, how to be a mother. You're right. But guys, do you guys ever get 
that sort of <laughs> you're attacking us i'm not attacking <laughs> i'm asking a question <laughs> I'm no, just it's, asking. No, it's because the question aims at our weakness. That's why. <laughs> Last week while you were away, we tried to do some man talk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I saw. <laughs> and we said, <laughs> now that we are here, mm -hmm. <laughs> we might as well uh, conduct some cool detat. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? One thing we were agreeing is, women beat us every time because they are eager to be mentored. Mm -hmm. They connect with the older women, their mothers. They eagerly. In secondary school, the form ones are attached to form threes and four forms, call each other mom, grandmom. You don't hear men saying grandpa. You don't hear that. <laughs> so what boys do is they bully. Yeah. <laughs> you know, instead, why girls are arguing each other, oh okay, girl, what you can't from is that part think? of psychology though? Exactly. Women are wired for connection. The first thing Eve had when she was created is born on my bones for like poems, connection. You know, but the problem with men, we have two problems. One is independence. We want to be alone, number two is compassion. Competition, competitive. When women meet each other on the road, they blink. They're happy that they met each other. They're driving, you know. Even if two women cars crash, scratch each other, they will start by checking, are you okay, girl? All right, what happened? <laughs> but men come out, Aah! you know. So there's competition a lot. <laughs> it's, it's part of our psychology that wires because of the desire to, desire to, uh, to outshine the ego, to impose, it become very competitive. It does not have to be that way. It's our weakness as men. We are, we are yet to overcome. And and I think I appreciate you for calling it a weakness because I think one of the major things that a lot of people struggle with is the idea that psychology is really the way we are wired. You're right. Right? So we don't necessarily almost have a say in how we are going to exactly. be wired. That's just what it is. Don't argue with your grain. Learn it. Fraud right. it. But then that also brings up the point. It is not then about staying that way because that's how you're wired. Right? You see, you're There's not, a wired, point about you're not you wired wrong. Putting in the work. It's because your nature carries certain weaknesses which you must overcome consciously. The independent minded of the man is was important for him to go out there hunting and trying and venturing out. Okay? The the connection orientation of the woman was important to keep the family cohesive and to be it's because of our mothers that we survived. Most most of us owe our survival. We appreciate our fathers. <laughs> But we know this is a point of make or break where women are willing to put their life on the line. Yeah. And we know in most families, if the man dies first, the family will pretty much survive. <laughs> <laughs> but if the woman dies first, <laughs> sometimes mm. the man marries so soon you wonder, uh, <laughs> was he preparing? <laughs> You know, it's, it's, it's to say your psychology orients you a certain way, but that certain way also carries inherent weaknesses. So for men, one of the weaknesses is because of our desire for, uh, for to venture out to try things, the testosterone, it can also take you too far. And I told you one of the problems, what we were saying with, with Frederick last week is, one of the problems we are wired to think that being a man means, you know, like drinking or come drink on the table of men, Imara, come on, Zimba, or, you know, lion shed not. Yes, no. Mm. The thing is, do not succumb to the weaknesses associated with the male being being male instead cultivate the strength what are those strengths take leadership yeah love your woman yeah. don't entertain drama okay. don't sit in the back seat because sometimes men confuse women they let her pay everything and he still wants to assert his place as a leader so who is the leader you are lead you are the honorary leader but she's the actual president you know in england we have a king queen then we have now the prime minister mm. the prime minister one in charge <laughs> the other one is just more of a you know honorary and ceremonial some men are ceremonial leaders. The practical leader is the woman. So Actually, be a practical let, leader. Let's talk about ceremonial leaders because I have a few questions coming in about that. Um, someone here is saying, hey, Joyce, um, Lois from Taveta, say hi to Benjamin. And today we women are scratching our heads. So earning more than the man or being financially stable doesn't outsmart the man in a marriage. You were never married to compete with each other and you say thanks for the update. Asante sana Can I add for something that. to that? Mm -hmm. Sometimes the people who are working more, who are getting more done, are more exposed to leadership. So earning joy is not just about money. It's about how many the, the more the, the scale of challenges you're dealing with. Mm -hmm. If you're learning, if you're running a big empire, you're dealing with more employees, you're dealing with more logistics, mm -hmm. you're solving more problems. So eventually you become a more refined leader. Okay. And I ask men, if where you are working is not working and your woman has built a business, switch and come where she is to learn more, to be exposed to more challenges. Don't stay there doing a very small thing. The woman is running a big empire. She's facing more people, solving more problems, dealing with more money. What happens in the end? Her mind is more exposed. Mm. She's more exposed. She thinks on a higher level. Don't agree that your woman stays in front for too long. It's not just about money. It's also about the problems she is solving. Okay. 
Someone here says, good topic, Joyce. What happens if you married a second wife, or I guess you're married as a second wife, and hubby doesn't want you to go to work, That's yet he does not provide 100%? What were you expecting when you came in as a second wife? Joyce, I have three other questions I want to combine in that one. One has texted oh me, I'm 36, money for 13 years. My husband tracks my phone, tracks. Can you huh? want me to move out to the house? They want to me, I'm 31, married for 10 years, da, 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 we are two years. And they ask the same question, why did you marry at 23? What were you running? You, you assumed this risk voluntarily. Deal with your monkeys. Guy <laughs> Benjamin. Just people go so far in the wrong direction, then they start wondering what happened. You could you So see, what was her first mistake being married as a second exactly, wife? You knew it would happen that way. Stop asking me. <laughs> you see, you see, Joyce. <laughs> Listen, please think uh, the most right. important skill in life is the ability to think. If you switch off your head, if you say goodbye <laughs> to your brains, and then you go get yourself in fire, don't just start asking me what happened. <laughs> Joyce, let's ask women to think ahead, please. Develop yourself to a certain level before you sign away your life. Get to know where you're going and who can go there with you. Some women are, 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 are going to marriage as a refuge. One girl called wanting to meet me and I told her I can't meet you when you're being this stupid. I'm 23, my mother chased me away from her. But her profile is a boyfriend. I told her, that guy on your profile, is he your brother or your... Oh, my boyfriend, the one I'm living with. I told her, listen, I can't meet you when you're ruining your life. Yeah. I know better. I know where you're headed. Soon you talk about pregnancy. Soon you talk about emotional attacks. Soon the guy will start controlling you. You have nothing to offer. You're hurting. You're bleeding. You need to, re re to heal fast. So these women will go so far in the wrong direction. Okay. What about this one? Maybe she didn't start off in the wrong direction, but she says, Hey Joyce, I'm married with three kids, but I do most of the house responsibilities and my hubby is okay, but I feel I'm tied. I've tried to convince him to to fanyaka biashara ili to say dear majukumu but kila nikim husisha hachukui hatua ni Okay. See Joyce, uh, we need to tell people that you do not say marriage should not turn to captivity. You need to tell your hubby that, you, you see what? We need money in order to survive. Mm -hmm. And we need to work. So this is my suggestion. Give me yours. I suggest we go start a business. Give me yours. You cannot leave me in the blank when we need to pay rent. We are struggling and we have an option. At some point, Joyce, don't submit too much that become a slave. Go out and work. Mm. Go out and work. Go earn the money. And tell him before you ask me anything. And if he tries to raise his hand towards you, tell him, ha, 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 my friend, this is where it ends. I was never your slave. I yeah. am a voluntary wife. We are here together to move life. Yeah. I am never your subject. Yeah. I'm not your victim. So let's, women, stop acting like slaves. You're just a partner. Eh. Okay. <laughs> you, and it's, it's like that. And I've never understood... And I don't think it's okay for a guy to ever say to a woman he doesn't want her to work. You know, if she agrees to it, maybe because of children other circumstances, and taking care of children, her family, own choice, whatever, maybe. that's and one thing. And if she has enough savings not to be asking for coin every day. Yeah. Or, and if you're going to be committed to supporting her, all exactly. of her different needs. But I don't think that's manhood. I don't think that's leading your house. It's by insecurity. You, you, it's domination. You it's, 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 it's bad leadership. It's, and you see, Joyce, women also have dreams to realize. Yeah, yeah. What if you are staying home, Joyce? Joyce, where would we get this show? Where would you be without full circle? You know. Joyce? I'm happy for your happy and I clap for him. He allowed you to be. Thank you. I told my girl to be as long as you play. Get me clothes, iron my clothes, get me food, and now go where you want. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my lord. Let's let our women be. I mean, she's better when she's happy and glowing and also experiencing life. I don't want you to find you home. You remained there. You're counting the mistakes I did and you, do, you don't have anything moving on. No, I want you to glow. Let me ask some more questions here. Someone says, in my house, it's 60-40 with the cooking and cleaning. My husband cooks and cleans about 40% of the time and I'm okay with cooking most of the time. So it's not a struggle with us and they are both working professionals. Perfectly. If you found a medium, we said if, if a couple finds where it works for them, mm -hmm. perfect, go on. We are all looking for harmony. You found it. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Someone here says, my spouse was in an accident a few years ago and the roles changed. Thank changed. Thank God my mom taught me how to cook and clean. I love my spouse dearly, but my love for my spouse is not being 
is not based on being able to cook and clean. In the end, a woman should prepare her son for both roles. That's written by a guy. I like that. That's the men we need now. Because yeah. life can take turns, Joyce. Mm -hmm. Twists and turns. We never know. And I'm so happy this guy is not... We have said, Now he has overcome those weaknesses and biases. He and say, that's true love. I love that. That's true love. You're not there because of what they were doing for exactly. you. And actually, allow me to call out those guys who, honestly, you're just trying to marry... <laughs> Am I allowed to say this? You're trying to marry like a house... You know help to reduce that with to benefits a, exactly with sexual benefits you know please don't reduce your women to just that like give your woman and i like this guy saying i don't mind cooking and doing what is supposed and i told you there are men who if you have true love you learn whatever needs to be learned you learn whatever needs to be done <sighs> yeah yeah life can take twists and turns <laughs> Only true love can survive, Joyce. Yeah. This time my girl couldn't wash it, a back problem. She was just having back pain. And she couldn't mop, although she likes working. And, and I could see it is hurting her. And when she's hurting, both of us are affected. Right. We can't move. I said, hey, I get a washing machine quickly. I, get, I do whatever needs. I don't want you to do anything. You must get, your health is our health. We are one now. Yeah. You know, I am not a favorite of washing clothes, but I must solve the problem somehow. Yeah. <laughs> so get it done yeah. somehow. I want to ask men to be that. This is your friend, first of all. It's your lover. This is your partner. This is your person. It's not below you or subject. No. Mm. I tell you, idealists, the more we talk together, the more we come up with the quality ideas. You must remove the ego out of the way. Absolutely. And just be one. Just talk. Just, just be free. I mean, this is a person you should be talking to when anything happens to you. Whatever good or bad, the first person you tell yeah. to talk. If you're breaking your news first to other people other than your partner, there's a problem. Mm -hmm. You need to be that close enough. And mm -hmm. that's why I keep whipping these pre-25s. Grow up enough to know what love is all about life is all about before you jump in mm -hmm. don't sign your life when you're so young that you can't tell red flags from what and what and you're signing away your life i tell them dating this early is so self-destructive almost suicidal you're, you're, you're putting your whole future in debt yeah. you're jeopardizing it what if this person cannot allow you to grow to evolve and that's why most great women had to divorce to take their career up because they married before they car before they even developed the career to know that they had a calling in ministry calling in, in politics calling in, in singing or anything those women flying up there, only a few go up with their marriages. Those who married when they knew they were becoming something. And the person they were marrying, they could see a marrying a woman and going out there. Because if you marry when you're so young in the university, they can't tell. Um, um, the University of Nairobi invited me this week and I told them, are you really taking the risk? <laughs> tell us about relationships. Oh no. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I told them, are you sure you want me to come out of this? I told them, right, I tell you the truth. Number one, the only thing I tell you about relationships is prepare for relationships by first uh, self-actualizing before you commit to anyone. Develop your skills to a level that you know where you're going. And I tell all the men in the university, you have no business talking to a woman about love. Boys in the university? Ah, my friend, cooking with a coil. <laughs> <laughs> Eating gumu and, and the cocoa for, uh, for supper. And now you are inviting her, come greet me. And then she enters and the room is the bedroom and the kitchen and the sitting room and the seat is the bed and the self-confused. <laughs> now you are treating her to a romantic what? Hello. Boy, you are too lost. Most men marry 10 years after leaving university. What are you doing with a girl that year? Say my girlfriend in first year. Really? Benjamin, let me, I need to, I'm going to have to take a break in a few. But um, let me ask you about this. At what point should a couple be discussing these gender roles and bringing them up as far as agreeing on how they're going to find their happy medium. Is this when you're dating, when you've just gotten engaged? Because I feel to wait until the you're married is way too just, late. The first conversations. I no, no, no. How are we going to be talking about this on our first date? What, what are we do talking you mean? about on the first date? You this want me to be talking? This is it. What do you believe about it? About who will be cooking, cleaning, and what, what do you what? believe? I don't ask who will because we don't. We are not sure whether we will marry yet. I just want to know your beliefs generally. Okay. And they come. I, it's not an interrogative. It's conversational. Remember, I told you the skill that time. If you ask direct questions, people will modify the answers to give you what they think you want to hear. Make it conversational. In fact, create scenarios that you are trying to help a friend whose husband refused to cook. Hear the guy's opinion. It will come undefended naturally. Ah, me, also me, I wouldn't cook. Hey, she should. Now you know his stand. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then bring up a situation. Uh, you know, I like it when my dad does night. You know, we ah uh, yeah, we took last. My dad made us good or girl, even if it's not true. Cook up situations here. What your dad cooks? Oh my, dad, you, 
God, where's your mom? <laughs> yeah. The, what if he says, oh, I like that. Oh, that's, that's such a gentleman. Greet him for me. You know who you're dealing with now. Okay. Make it conversational. Everything requires thinking and tact. Especially if trying to know a person's true character without looking interrogative. Yeah. Because I told you, if you tell him direct, what do you expect in a woman? <laughs> He will tell you what he read on YouTube, oh, what he saw on Google. <laughs> it will come up in oh, no. true genuine positions, come up in conversations. And uh, I told you that guy was watching TV and a, a lady had, had uh, poured hot water on the husband and she had been caught. And then they were watching TV, husband and wife, and the wife comments, hey, hey, Mimi, I want to Kimbia. They would never have caught me, meaning she has the potential. Those she violent did. opinions, Joyce, yeah, they, they are more her. honest. Absolutely. Wow. Benjamin, thank you for coming onto the show today. I think what we can summarize here today is allow each other to flourish yeah. because it adds on to the relationship exactly. at the end of the day. But as soon as you both walk into your house, into the doors of your house, remember you are one team. And for as long as your ego, your pride, your selfish, selfishness is going to come in the way, then you will never succeed, exactly. you know, together as a couple. So great reminder for us tomorrow. So women, be empowered outside your house. <laughs> and more, now me pia wateza chini kidogo. Ama namna gani? Exactly. Exactly. All right, guys. Benjamin, how can people find Benjamin you? Benjamin Zulu KE everywhere. Email Benjamin Zulu KE at Gmail. All right. With that said, guys, we're going to take a break now as we get ready for our final segment of the day. We're going to be diving into skincare. Triple one, triple four, triple one is the SMS line. I'll be back after this.